Hi guys, um, so this is a um, quick video on um, Gephi. Uh, in my last video I spoke about uh, basically coming across Gephi and hopefully it's going to be um, one of the tools that I can really produce some really, really nice poster design from. So what I'm going to do is, for my printed material, is I would like to have eight large scale posters um, no smaller than A2, and A2 is the minimum size I would like to go. Um, I know obviously when you're kind of get reaching A0, or A1 or A0 prices, you're, you know, something's 20, 30 pound at least for a poster, um, which obviously when you times that by A, um, you're talking maybe a couple of hundred pounds. Um, so it can obviously, the price can start to escalate pretty quickly. Um, so I understand that um, I'll need to sort of really go out there and have a good shop around and see if um, I can sort of find a really good price to get things printed off. But regardless, poster design, eight of them, and that's how I'd like to produce um, my printed material for the exhibition. Um, Gephi is, again, the programme that I would like to use, and I'm just going to give you a quick uh, rundown of the, the interface now. This is very new to me. So there is actually quite a lot here that I am not 100% sure what they actually do. It's been called, when I was researching, essentially the Photoshop of data analysis. Now, that quite excites me. One, because uh, Photoshop is one of my main tools. Um, I would say I am relatively advanced in Photoshop. It's a tool that I probably use every day. However, um, the fact it's been called the Photoshop of data analysis uh, it gives me a very real um, reality check that the program will be very in-depth. Um, I have been learning Photoshop and I stress learning Photoshop because you're always constantly learning and they're always bringing out new things and there's always something else to learn and Photoshop is renowned that there is um, not just one, but usually a hundred ways of performing the same task. So, um, I am proceeding with caution, if you like. Um, but obviously, you know, going in there, clicking buttons, I think the, the trick is, is not to be um, intimidated or frightened by a new program. I mean, let's be honest, you can just go in here, you can click away until your heart contents and completely break things. Um, make things look absolutely ridiculous and then um, basically just create a new sheet so that's really what I'm going to do um, not in this uh, video but I'm going to show you um, a graph file which has been opened up and and sort of how it works so Gephi um, accepts various formats and um, one of them being a CSV file which is great because what I can do is uh, get my developer to write a script which will then analyze the information that we are downloading, put it into a CSV file format. I can then import that into Gephi. Gephi will create um, the various lines and dots to show connections, if you like. So, um, this is Gephi in front of me. Um, it's got some similarities to Photoshop. You've got, you know, sort of right um, hand or left hand toolbox right here. Some drop down menus that give you various options um, that at this moment mean very little to me. But um, these are ways of, um, how would you put it? Ways of um, organizing the data. Over here, it shows nodes and edges. Um, nodes is basically a dot, so nodes usually represents a thing or a person or something tangible and the edge is basically a line um, and the edges create a, a line between the connections. Um, so nodes in a simple aspect, dots and, and lines, dots and lines, nodes and edges, dots and lines. And, uh, and I'll show you how this sort of works in the graph. Um, you have your filters down here, which is, um, these are again how you, how you begin to search for data, how you begin to um, organize your data, and, um, and, uh, and I think these are very powerful. 
um, to use once you understand how they work. And Gaffy is in its uh, beta stage, um, and I've lost my mouse, uh, so it can be a little bit buggy. There it goes back, um, and there is various. I mean, it is quite extensive here, and again, a lot of them don't mean very much. There is um, online sources where you can uh, obviously find things and uh, you know get the information of what each is. Um, down here, some more, you can you know change text size, text colour, you can zoom in and out when you've got something to look at. Um, there's like little hidden menus here which bring up other things. Again, you can, you know, alter nodes, alter edges, alter the labels, which is the text that relate to the dots and lines that you're talking about. You've even got a, a, an option here to change it to rectangle or even make it three, 3D which um, I've not even bothered trying to experiment with yet. And there's a little light bulb here which changes your background from white to black. So to open a file, um, I've been sort of playing about with here, so you can go to open recent. If not, you can just go to open like any other program. What it does is it brings up a little window, which is essentially your um, computer. But in my case, I can just go to open, open recent, and this is a Euro SIS Generals uh, pays so these are like companies um, now when you open up the file this is obviously in here it tells you that there's been 1285 nodes so that's 1285 dots and 700 7524 edges which means there is 7524 connections between these dots um, just click OK and there you go so a very comprehensive graph um, that you can sort of zoom in and out. It should be, let me, uh, that's what it does, it lets me grab that. So you, you just sort of zoom in and out to, to, to what you need to look at. You, the, the part where your mouse is hovering over, that's where it'll zoom in. So if I sort of zoom out and then hover this bit here, it'll just zoom right in here. So it's quite good that way if I want to look over there, here, and so on and so forth. Um, so, you can use this button to show edge labels. So if I click on show edge labels, um, nothing's shown up because there must be no labels connected to the label in the graph for show the labels for them. Uh, nothing appears to be, there you go, you just need to zoom in, that's what it is. So you can turn off the labels on and off. So Institute for Politics Sciences, this dot here, um, by highlighting that dot, it's showing you the connections. So it has a, a connection to, I can't really move off that, but as you can see to the right, the Haas Institute of Sociology, um, you know, and various, and, and various other uh, sites, um, as you can see in front of you. Um, the edge weight, which basically means the thickness of the edge, shows the intensity or strength of the connection and um, so obviously the thicker these connections are which probably means there's more business um, or dealings done in general with these with these nodes uh, with these other nodes or companies um, and you know there's obviously a ton of a ton of little dots here but the what this sort of shows is a very complex complex data structure but putting it in a very nice digestible format something that, that you know you can just enjoy to look at before you even need to dig deep into the data you know some people may just be there for the visual aspect and then perhaps maybe want to dig into the data um, on a later date or another time when they're not at the exhibition they maybe just want to sort of look at the the complexity of what's in front of them and that's the kind of that's the sort of I, or that's the, the, the sort of idea that I want to get across. Um, again, if you turn the light off and change this to black, it all of a sudden takes this sort of nighttime, um, nightscape sort of style, you know, NASA style image. And you can hover over nodes and it just sort of blanks out those connections and shows only the dots and it looks, you know, very tranquil and, 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 and just 
cracking to look at and that's what I really want to get across and my data will show, you know, again emotions which will be coloured um, to the various emotions so there'll be this you know, lovely plethora of colour um, and that's really what I want to get across. In the data library, um, to show you kind of how this works in the overview, if I just turn this back on, right? So each node is represented by an ID. Okay, so this one, 7P, uh, FP7 in Bulgaria, his identification is number two, or, or their identification is number two. Um, you have a, you know, as you work your way down, Bulgarian women in science, and their identification is 12. And this lets Gefe focus on these numbers to place dots. Now, to create an edge, you need to tell Gefe with an edges table what's connected to what, so it can then begin making those connections. So, for instance, if you want to tell um, Gefe that the, seven, uh, the FP7 in Bulgaria, number two, is connected to, and I think if you look at the edges table here, so here's the edges table, source and target. Source basically means where do I start drawing the line, and target means where do I finish up my line. So here, source two is connected to target 1094. So looking at our dots table, or nodes table, our source is 2, which is the um, FP7 in Bulgaria, number 2, is um, connected to 1094. So if we scroll all the way down um, to 1084, I believe, was it? 1094 is here. Ministry of Education and Science. So that tells Gefe that if this was the dot, number two, connect it to the Ministry of Science, which could be all the way over here. And that's how that basically works. And that's what the data lab is telling Gefe to do. Draw a line from node two to the target. Start, finish, start, finish. And what you can do is um, this this node has two connections, so it has a connection from to there, and it also has a connection to this person. So what Gaffey's done is, is drawn this node and connected it to two places, and that's really the 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 the, the simple the, the, the simple sort of explanation of how this works, and you get this absolutely very complex but really nice looking table. You can then take this table and create a poster from it. The upside is of this is that you can create, you can export it as an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic, which means everything is done in mathematical lines, it's vector, so I can scale this up to the size of a mountain without losing um, the image quality. And then I can also come in here, select you can see these lines that it's selected, they're all connected. So I can select one line, I can go to multiply uh, the effects and lighten, and it all of a sudden changes the look. And that's how I would like my final sort of posters to sort of look like. Um, you can also click the nodes and you can change the colour of them, and all of a sudden takes on a different, if I remove the background, you just have this sort of very complex background. If I draw another background on it um, and colour it, um, any default swatch is basic print. If I just put a very dark background on that, there you go. So here you have disgust placed on a back background showing thousands of connections between thousands of users um, and displaying you know the word disgust and, and right down here in the poster design I've got the word disgust 
and a little explanation. I mean, this is um, going to be sort of like a generic template that, that, that I've sort of created. And uh, each emotion, or as I input the data, I'll hopefully get different patterns emerging. And, um, you know, this one will say discussed and it'll have 10,000 uh, users. That, that could be the sample, it could be more. Um, over nine topics, again, there isn't nine topics right here, but these are like some of the big topics in the manifestos of the political parties, the economy, taxes, immigration, schools, hospitals, energy, retirement, or pensions, um, and so on, the, the European Union. And uh, you'll have these large scale and see these posters as something that I could go in and just look at. And the more you zoom in, if the more if I get them printed larger and larger and larger, printed the size of a wall, I mean, look at the complexity of these lines in here and the dots that they're connected to, just to make them, you know, a little more visual. Um, just colour burn. There you go. These are just the standard overlay effects that you get with, um, you know, the program. Um, and, and, you know, you can you can zoom in as far as you like, which basically means I can get this printed as a, as as large as I like, or as large as I, you know, I can possibly afford. And, um, you know, you'll have this amazingly complex machine. And they'll have, um, you know, to, to the left of it, you know, on the wall, um, or somewhere, an explanation of what you're looking at. So you can just go in and enjoy the complexity of data analysis and then dig deeper if you're interested in finding out exactly what's, what's you know, what's it about or, or, or what where the information was taken from. And again, this is just, so these are just two files that I found online that I was able, you were able to download to um, help yourself familiarise yourself with Gephi. And these were like sort of playing about with some of the, some of the filters just to kind of change the shape and ask you to do different things, like look for certain things or just use some of the, the general um, filters just to sort of help stretch and pull it. And um, and this has done the same. So I'm using backgrounds to to sort of, you know, really enhance the colours um, of the emotion. Um, so this could be in a coloured background. It shows you here uh, the background is just on a plain black background, you know, but I can maybe do the same with this because maybe, maybe everything will just look better on this you know, a very dark background and, you know, this really punchy, um, if I just uh, arrange, send this to back, send to back, you know, it's not looking as good as, um, change that to red, how does that look? Maybe just a bit thin to be bringing them forward, so maybe I could, um, make that 10, point 10, see how that looks, you just let you start looking a little more red, I mean this one's very very busy, but um, you know I actually think it looks better on on the the normal background, um, but again I mean this was sort of just sort of playing around and, and seeing how you could, so you, know, you maybe might take that away and, and, and drop in the actual colour again, yeah, it just seems to complement it, I feel, a little bit more, um, you know, if you bring that in and sort of thing, and then you could, you know, clip and mask this round so you've not got all these sort of stray nodes bringing out, maybe you want to shrink that in and bring all them in, um, but I think that, you know, and again, you've then got this big anger, and then just a quick explanation of what it's come from, the amount of users, the topics, the manifestos, the five political main parties, and then everything underneath that, that, that you've been seeing, so, you know, that's how I think I would really like to see this um, going. Um, I hope I've spoke to my developer and discussed um, that if I can figure out roughly how the CSV works, I will create um, a sample CSV, again, one with nodes, one with edges. So I'll, I'll create one that just tells it to draw the dots um, or to assign each user and person a, a, an identification number. And then I'll create a a sample edges file which basically tells the program to draw lines between what dots and I'll probably create a small sample of say 20 I'll get that to work I will then um, send those um, CSV files to my developer and hopefully in fact he sort of said to me that he'll be able to uh, reverse engineer if you like a PHP script which will then be able to go into Twitter and mine 
tens of thousands of sort of nodes and edges that are relevant to our topic. So hopefully that will um, work out pretty well and um, within the next week or so I'll hopefully have something to upload and show you um, of data that is actually relevant to what we're doing. So thanks for listening and until next time.